There are different kinds of science fiction. There's science fiction that's about robots and spaceships, and that's not what this is. This is about a sociological science fiction that says, what if the ground rules changed? What if the rules of our existence changed? Um, and now what that gives us the opportunity to do is to recreate the kind of the gangsters and the corrupt society and the, and the, uh, the average person being kind of an underdog who is in need of a hero. Uh, I mean, we always feel like we're in need of heroes, but I think that this um, ups the stakes. So we've created a hero to fill this, this vacuum, this need, and uh, she's the dark angel. She's the, the avenging angel of the story. The character's name is Max. Well, one of the things that we did in, in, in conceptualizing this, you know, when Jim first, uh, we were first talking about this, and he said, you know, let's, let's talk about a sci-fi show. And I, I, I was sort of allergic to the notion because I'm not learned in science fiction. I haven't read it. I, 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 I'm not a student of it the way he is. And he said, but you see, that's perfect. That's what's wonderful about it because what you do is you write about people. It's futuristic. It takes place uh, 20 years in the future. Um, but it's a future that probably resembles uh, the Great American Depression of the, of the 30s more than what you might anticipate um, um, a kind of high-tech future to, to be. Uh, we're saying that there's a, uh, an event that causes a complete economic collapse and America's sort of back into a depression really a, a sort of a model for what this future looks like is Havana today. I mean, essentially after the revolution in 1959, technology and, and, and society just stopped. It just froze in its tracks. I mean, if you look at Buena Vista Social Club, you can see a Havana that really existed 50 years ago, but it's the narrative present of the movie. And what we're able to do here by, by sort of adopting this, this, this conceit for our show is use the technological present as 25 years in the future. Imagine if technology just stopped where it is right now. Well, Max is special in a lot of ways. Uh, she's special because she's played by a very special girl, Jessica Alba. I think you, you've interviewed her. She's, we, we think she's a really spectacular new talent. And she's special as a character because she's uh, the product of a genetic engineering experiment. So she's, um, Max is short for maximum. She's the maximum girl. She's, she's kind of a revved up version of us. She's not a cyborg. She's not a machine. She's kind of the, the nth degree of human potential uh, distilled down. You know, the fact that our main character is genetically engineered, that's not something that could take place in present day, considering that she's an adult. It's an experiment that has begun in our present day, and we all know, we you know, with the various advances in, in, in cloning and genetic engineering that exists now, that such a thing is maybe either possible now or just around the corner, certainly not very far off. But for a main character who's a young adult, you know, she's supposed to be 19 years old in our story, it can't happen now. It has to happen 19, 20, you know, 20 years from now. When we found Jessica, we knew we had found the best actor of anyone that we had looked at. So then it was like, okay, kid, you got six months to get in shape. <laughs> <laughs> she's been and working hard. She has been working so hard, and and it really it really shows. I mean, she she just has a, a real physicality that she didn't have when she first came to us. But it seemed to me that since, you know, it's all based on on the heart, on the emotions, and very much on her interior landscape, uh, that we had to find the actor. You know, we had to find the best actor. We also, as writers, had a wonderful opportunity that's not usually afforded us because we we found Jessica actually before we we'd written the script. Um, so that with Jessica in tow and with Jessica training and getting to know her, the character of Max on the page is, really resembles the, you know, the wonderful person that we've gotten in front of the camera. Well, we have a wonderful actress, and I think this is a person, this, the, you know, Jessica is extraordinary, and I think uh, people are going to tune in this show, they're going to see her, girls are going to want to be her, guys are going to want to be with her. She's just very, there's, there's something wonderfully inveigling about, about, about her. I mean, she just draws you in. And I think we I, have a good chemistry. I think we, we have a good chemistry between, between the actors. I think we have a good chemistry between the elements. And it's a unique chemistry. Nobody else is doing anything quite like this. Our guy, Logan, um, you know, he tells the truth. Now, he's smart enough to do it anonymously. He's, he, he, hacks in, he hacks into uh, cable feeds, and he does cable hacks that are seen, you know, regionally, possibly, possibly nationally, where he pops in for 60 seconds, and he tells you what's really going on. And he does it with this kind of pixelated way of hiding his face. And he says, here's the straight... The straight scoop, folks. This is what's really going on. You can't trust these people. This, 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 and this. And so he's a truth teller in a time when nobody's telling the truth. And and so they want him. They want him. They want to take him out. You know, he's making he's making an awful lot of enemies. 
We're pulling out all the stops that we can to do to do wire work. There's a lot of high stuff on buildings because Max is a thief. And with her skills, with her ability to uh, physically access places that you and I couldn't, um, she's, uh, you know, she's always climbing around some skyscraper, dropping down, rappelling down the face of some, some high rise. And so, you know, we've had to recreate that. And I think the stunt guys have been doing a spectacular job. So in a way, while you know working in television, one might be envious of the greater resources of a feature film. On the other hand, as a writer, having worked in features, I'm envious of the opportunity to have a more novelistic canvas to paint on. So, the, uh, I mean, there's a scope and a scale to, to this pilot that's unlike anything I've worked on in television. Uh, the thing, and, and there will be certainly on a weekly basis, you will see a physicality and a scope of action that that that's a little uncommon for television. But the, the heart of TV, where it really lives and breathes, is right in here, and it's in the characters and it's in the relationships, and and that's where we're putting our energies.